American Airlines Flight 51 from London arriving now at the International Terminal. Arriving passengers will be exiting customs in Terminal 2E. I'm so sorry. I know. I still can't believe it happened. Just a minute. Hey, John Ross. Uncle Bobby. How you doing, son? Okay, I guess. It's weird, but I think I half expected my dad to be standing here waiting for me. I guess it really hasn't sunk in. I know. I keep thinking he'll come walking down the stairs at South Fork, too. Big smile on his face. Come on, let's go to the ranch, huh? Do you know any more about what happened? Some. He uh, was on the side of the road with a flat tire. A truck went out of control and hit him. It just doesn't make any sense. I never thought about him dying. But I know I'd pictured it happening in a much more heroic fashion. Or being shot by a jealous husband. Well, it doesn't much matter how or when it happens. The only good news is that it was over before he ever knew what he did. He moved back in at Southport? Yeah, I guess he was going to stay here for good. Is he mad at me because I didn't come back with him? Heck no. He was talking about how terrific he was. I should have come back with him, but I didn't want to leave my mom alone either. Alone? What about that Lockwood guy? She they split up a few months ago. She never exactly said why, but I think I know. And? I think she was still in love with my dad. I know that sounds dumb, but every so often she'd, she'd come into my room and just kind of look at his picture. And I just kept thinking how cool it would be if maybe somehow they'd get back together. It's never gonna happen now. Where you been? Did you get the information from a broker? He sold the software stock and converted the money into Westar stock. You're now the largest minority shareholder. Good. The schedule's working right down to the minute. And Steve Grisham came by. He's located Afton Cooper's daughter. It's all in there. Perfect. Perfect. All right, I want you to call Rennigan. Tell him I want to see him tonight. No. Pardon me? I can't be a part of this anymore. Sly, what the hell's wrong with you? JR, I have done things for you I wouldn't have done for anyone else in the world. I didn't understand all of it, but I always thought there was a line you wouldn't cross. Yeah? Well, not anymore. You always said your family was the most important thing in the world to you, and now you've made them believe you're dead. Don't you care what that must be doing to them? Well, of course I do. But I'm not going to stand idly by and watch my daddy's company just vanish into West Star. Well, what about Radigan putting that body in your car? Oh, for God's sake, that old drunk was dead long before that truck hit him. And no one will ever know who he was or what happened to him. I'm sorry, JR. I can't go along with this one. Sly, you go through that door and you better keep walking till you hit the Pacific Ocean. The further away from you, the better. Hey, if Sue Ellen or Bobby ever gets wind of this, you'll regret it until your dying day. I already do. Time for your medication. I don't need any medication. I keep telling the doctor there's nothing wrong with me. I know, but this is just to make you feel better. I won't take it. I, I won't. You remember the last time you wouldn't? If I take it, and I don't cause any trouble. Can I please call my daughter? She doesn't know where I am or what happened. Please. Why, well, sure you can. But first, take your medication.
Now? Well, not now. But maybe this afternoon. I'm very sorry about your brother, Mr. Ewing. Thank you. Oh, uh, Sue Ellen, this is Julia Cunningham. Hello. And this is Pamela. I'm sorry, Pamela. I don't know your last name. Cooper. Cooper. Hello. Sue Ellen Ewing. Yeah, actually, it's Lockwood, I guess, but JR's ex wife. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Hi, Chris. It's really sad. Pamela, this is my cousin, John Ross. JR was dead. And uh, this is Julia Cunningham. I'm very sorry about your dad. Thanks. It's nice to meet you. You too. Well, maybe we'll see you later. Who's that? A friend of mine. She's staying with Julia in town. She's pretty. Where's that thing? Cliff, wasn't sure you'd be here. Well, I just came to make sure he was dead. I, I don't see Jessica anymore. Oh, no, this is a memorial service. I guess the burial was private. Probably did that to keep me away. Cliff, you haven't been buying any West Star stock lately, have you? Why would I? I told you I went out of the oil business. Uh-huh. Well, somebody had. Quite a bit of it. Not my problem. I'd better go over there and say hello. Yeah, huh? Bobby. So, uh, you look great. Hello, Cliff. How are you? Actually, I'm pretty good. Yes. Dan Ross, I'm sorry about your dad. Thanks. Well, let's get this thing started, okay? John Ross, you ready? I'm ready. Okay, sir. All right, everybody, would you please take your seats, folks? Please come in and sit down. All right, please. All right, thank you. Please find a seat. First, I want to thank you all for coming today to say goodbye to JR. Before the minister speaks, JR's son, John Ross III, would like to say a few words. I know most of you knew my dad. I mean, uh, maybe you knew him from business or just socially. But you didn't really know him. Not the way I did. Not the way the family knew him. Hey, what's going on? Bobby throwing a party? <laughs>